It is Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. This is another edition of Baseball Today presented to you by Fubo TV. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan, along for the ride as well. We are one week away from the start of the 2023 baseball season. Are you ready? I am ready. Uh, we have this kind of lull week here between the WBC and the and opening day. And I think it's probably good for us because we were all in on the WBC. We kind of need to get our bearings with these teams. That's why we're doing these previews. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm ready. I, I need baseball in my life, dude. I know you're ready. Oh, yeah. And, and I need one other thing from you. We do. We need your assistance. We need our Fubo TV question of the yes. week, which we will reveal on Friday's show. So you have until Thursday night to get it in. We will pick the most entertaining, interesting, thought-provoking one that we can find. Not only will you become famous as we use your name on this podcast, but we will also send you Baseball Today swag. Oh, with a t-shirt. yeah. So come on, get it in. Let's get creative out there, people. Uh, before we do our American League Central preview, I want to start out with a real interesting comment because – there was a lot of talk over the last few weeks of what the WBC meant to people outside of our little baseball world, if you will. Well, Connor McDavid was asked about it. He, of course, is a two-time Hart Trophy winner, the MVP of the NHL. And so he was asked about Shohei versus Trout. I thought it was really cool. It's what we've been asking for in hockey for a long time, right? Um, you know, it was best on best. And, um you know, look, everyone's talking about baseball and, you know, did you see, you know, Otani versus Trout? And, you know, that's what hockey's been missing for, you know, almost a decade now. So, um, yeah, that's what we've been, that's what we've been asking for. How big a deal is that comment? Baseball's leading the way in something, an entertainment factor. It's kind of a big deal right there. I mean, this, this tournament really, uh, you know, turned a lot of heads, you know, internationally. And then obviously even here in the States, other sports were watching it. We saw, uh, a couple of basketball players wearing like an Otani jersey. So let me get this straight. The NHL does not do this. I thought they did do this. Well, they did. And then in when they were supposed to have it again in the Olympics, I want to say it was 2020. It might have been shut down because of COVID. I'm, I'm okay. pretty sure. I, I, I might have the years wrong here, but I think the last time was, so yeah. Everyone's talking about this. I even watched some stuff about, you know, the basketball season and they'd want to do the all-star game, which has turned into a joke in the NBA. They'd like to do world versus the U S and they think that that is just, will just bring out the competitiveness in these types of games. Now it's, that's different than the WBC because I feel like that wasn't just competitive. That, that meant something. Uh, so it's, it's been a win for baseball and clearly it's got a lot of different sports thinking about how they can replicate it. Yeah, I think that uh, I think it is a big deal. And I think this was an extremely successful tournament. Uh, I think those naysayers in the beginning and obviously after the Diaz and Altuve injuries, I think those have been somewhat squashed to a degree. I mean, listen, it's going to suck that we don't have Edwin Diaz this year running out to trumpets blaring. and We're not going to have Altuve the first few months of the year. That stuff sucks. Nobody can say, oh, yeah, it's not that big. It is a big deal. It is a big sure. deal. But at the same time, the goals of the WBC, I think, were reached. First and foremost, it entertained the hell out of us. The baseball yep. was fantastic. The stadiums were packed. The atmosphere was unreal. The ratings were sensational. All of it was great. All of that was great. And I think that there's a lot that the sport can build on. And I do think it's a big deal when you've got one of the biggest names in another sport that is throwing bouquets at baseball. Yeah, you know, it's like you want to play for something. And, you know, I, I get it. Like when you're in baseball, you have a city and you want to represent that city. And a lot of times you're not from there. Most of the time you're not from there, but you oh, try to embody yeah. the city as, as much as possible. Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. When you strap your country's name on your chest, like you feel that. So I think that's what a lot of people are missing, especially in the NBA as we're switching teams back and forth. There's no like loyalty to a city. But when you put USA on your chest and you're going against the world, I think that that's what sparks that competitiveness so much. And, and kind of it just makes everything a little bit more exciting and watchable, doesn't it? Absolutely. Go ask Sidney Crosby what his golden goal meant in international competition. It's it's a big, big deal. So 
Um, I thought it was awesome to see. And I will have nothing but fond memories for the most part of the 2023 World Baseball Classic. All right, we continue on with our preview of the American League Central. We will go from last year's standings top to bottom. That's why I'm wearing my brand new Cleveland Guardians cap. Look at this. Fresh out of the box. Ooh. Dave Eichinger, shout out. Nice. Shout out. Wait a you hook the hookup, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. This is a tight Cleveland ad. It's got like the old 70s C on it. I love it. Uh, so speaking of which, my Cleveland Guardians used a record-tying 17 rookies en route to their division crown a year ago. How worried should Guardians fans be that their youngsters will not repeat their fast starts of 2022? I think you're kind of talking about sophomore slumps and like the league adjusting to these guys. I totally get that. Uh, but Tito's like the right guy to handle that situation for these young guys. And they have some veterans there as well that'll help with that. Um, the one thing they def have on their side, Chris, and this is like a baseball terminology statement is speed doesn't slump. And this is what this team can True. do. And that base running uh, is still going to be there. The infield hits, I think, will still be there. The first to thirds that they used to or that they led the league in last year uh, should still be there. I think they have the pitching depth and bullpen to keep them in game. So yeah, it's just about staying aggressive and sticking to their to their game plan. I think that they're going to be able to do that because, like I said, that speed doesn't slump. And everyone's kind of like bu they buy into it. I read a few articles, and that's all they talk about is buying into what Tito says. Even Josh Bell is saying, look, this has been emphasized more here than anywhere else I've been. And he, he thinks that when you have that level of acceptance from not only the rookies, but the veterans also, I mean, that's what it takes to, to kind of create that, that uh, demeanor as a team. So I, I think they're going to be fine. I think there's a couple other teams that are going to be pressing them in the division, but what they did last year works and they'll just continue to do that. I'll say this as a Cleveland fan, that was the most enjoyable team I've seen outside of our world series clubs. Um, 95 was special because it was the first time that we had a badass lineup in my lifetime. 2016 was a remarkable run. 97 was unreal, that sort of stuff. But what this team accomplished last year, I remember being, I think, Michelle and I were celebrating our 25th anniversary last year in Cabo when the season kicked off. And I remember watching them. I want to say in Kansas city on day one, I was like, Oh my God, this team can't hit. We are going to be horrible. And these guys just started putting it together and it didn't matter. Like some of the guys they started the year with, it was, it felt like Mercado and Zimmer and guys like that were on the team. And then they started peeling away they were like if you can't do it you're out because we got plenty of young guys who can and that's the thing about Cleveland they've got a top five farm system which includes dudes who are right on the cusp of being big leaguers so while there's always ample opportunity in Cleveland if you're young to get a shot you better do something with it because if not they're going to move on to the next guy who can the thing that worries me a little bit about my roster build is it last year only the Tigers had fewer homers, so they don't have a ton no. of pop? Josh Bell's going to help with that a little bit, but all in all, maybe Oscar Gonzalez hits a few more bombs. And they don't have power arms in their rotation. They really don't. It's guys who have touch and feel, Bieber with his sliders, and it really comes down to Savali and Plesak at the back end of that rotation. If those guys... I mean, Savali was banged up, and then when he came back, he just really couldn't rediscover it, and Plesak was up and down all of last year. If they don't get consistent performances out of the four and five starters, they're going to be in trouble. But like you mentioned, they, ha they have guys that can come up and, and fill those spots they if do. needed. Now, you never know how they're going to react at the big league level, but if anyone has a track record of developing pitching, it's it's Cleveland, right? It's been one of their calling yeah. cards for a while. So I, I'm not necessarily worried about that. I understand the whole like sophomore slump thing, but like Quan last year, didn't he have like a really bad stretch? And then he came out of it. He had one, he had one really bad month. He had a, he yeah. had a blistering start. Remember where he didn't swing and miss like for the first three yeah. weeks of the year. But but even something like that, like going through a really bad month and coming back out and like, and finding yourself again, like that is, 
you know, that's essentially a sophomore slump. And if you learn how to get out of those quicker, I mean, that's going to help with them. But I, I, I just see this team, if they stick to that game plan of, of kind of what they did last year, like it, it worked, man. And it's yep, going to be, it yeah, I mean, they're going to have to fend off a few teams that we're going to talk about right here, but I don't expect like this, this, this spike and then this crash from this team. I don't. The second place White Sox have a new manager and some new pieces as well. Uh, was last season just a bad year with too many injuries, or is there something more to them underachieving? <laughs> you always get me to talk about this guy. I think I think mostly it was injuries. I think that the Tony Larusa effect uh, was definitely there as well. Um, there was like a lack of urgency last year. There was rumblings of people being unprepared. Uh, Br- Grafal has come in and he's kind of changed all that. He says, we're going to prepare. He even had to mention that they're going to start to use analytics, which I thought was hilarious in this, in this day and age. Um, he wants to be like the exact opposite of TRL, basically TLR. Sorry, excuse me. TRL is the TRL show I used to watch show. on MTV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, guys are gonna have to have like healthy bounce back years. Uh, I think one thing that's working in their favor is they're going to have uh, Jimenez out of the outfield. He'll be DHing. Vaughn is going to replace a at first base. So get those guys out of the outfield and let them just focus and, and be hitters. I think that's going to help them improve. Um, they bring in Andrew Benatendi, uh, Louis Robert jr. Do you know he has a junior in, in his name now? No, he does. Yeah, so remember that because I didn't know that until I started researching for the show today. Uh, Louis Robert Jr. will be out there. And then there's this guy, Oscar Colas, who like people are thinking he's going to make the team. He's another Cuban ball player, so you know I like him. This team has all the pieces, dude. Like, I like the starting pitching. Uh, you know, the Liam Hendricks blow is really tough for them. You know, shout out, Liam. Hope you're doing well, man. Uh, I can't quit this team. I think the roster still looks really good to me. If they do have all the bounce back years, if they do come out with a sense of urgency and start to play hard again and are prepared, I think this team has a shot at the AL Central title. I really do. I wonder if there's a bad mix in that clubhouse. I really, I, I'm just wondering. Not bad guys, just a bad mix. It, there's a difference, in my opinion. Okay. Um. I think they're really going to miss Jose Abreu on so many levels, right? You could just punch in the numbers year after year. I know his homers were down last year, but he still was the biggest threat. He was the only guy on that team last year that a high, higher position player, I should say, that had a higher war than 2.1. The only one on the entire team. That's not good. You don't want that. No. And they had too many guys that were injured. But you know what? For some of these guys, that's their track record now. It wasn't like, oh, fluky. It's kind of who they are. And now they're going to have to prove it to us that they can play 140 games instead of 100. Here's the here's the list of regulars who played fewer than 105 games last year. 105. Anderson, Eloy, Moncada, Robert Jr. Thank you. Grandal. It's more than half your lineup. Yeah, it's the big boys too. Get out there. Stop saying I, I, we can be better and be better. Yeah, I mean, they have, they have to prove it to everybody. There's no doubt about it. But when you just sit down and look at the roster, there's just a lot of talent there. You can you can dream upon a lot of things uh, with this team. Maybe that's just me. I don't know if I just can't quit them or not. But when I when I sit down and look at the roster and I see these guys play when they're healthy, it's there's a lot of really talented ballplayers on this team. And I still really like the pitching staff. Like I do too. There's some guys that, that took a step back last year, but I don't believe that's who they are. I mean, Cease, you know, not coming out of nowhere, but like he's become one of the better pitchers in baseball. Last year was Cy Young too. I mean, that was kind of a, a throw in for them. Lance Lynn, we've seen he should be Lance Lynn. Giolito, you said lost some weight. He's looking good. Hopefully he returns mm-hmm. to form. Uh, Kopek, I really believe in. Like they, they have a really good mix. They're going to miss Johnny Cueto. What a signing that was. But there's still enough on this team, man. There really is. Can we agree that if this team does not get it done this year, that there's going to be major changes? I think so. I think by the deadline, if yeah. there is, if if they're in a, a bad spot, we'll we'll see some changes for sure. Yeah, I don't think there's a question about it. To be honest with you. All right, baseball today is presented to you by these guys, Shady Rays. You can take on the sun with gear that is built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades at a very affordable price. In fact, Shady Rays offers a world-class product just as good as any expensive pair you've ever worn. They got durable frames. 
extremely clear optics. And guess what? They're going to put money back in your pocket as well. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in the history of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. That means if you lose or you break a pair, even on day one of ownership, they will send you a brand new pair. I call in. Guess what happened? For the sixth time in the last 18 months, I sat on a pair of shades in my car. They don't go, hey, fat ass, why don't you pay attention to where you put your sunglasses? They go, no problem, Mr. Rose. We know where to send them. They don't even ask any questions. So you got confidence with Shady Rays because they have your back long after you purchase them. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays giving out the best deal of the season. ShadyRays.com, use code word today, 50% off two plus pair of polarized sunglasses. Code word today, 50% off two plus pair of polarized sunglasses. And when you break them, you get another pair. Shady Rays. I knew you were going to say something about your fat ass, but you always got to mention that, bro. That's the right. thing is fat. It is. It's luscious. It's quite the. It's quite the peach. Year two of Carlos Correa up there in your old home in Minnesota. Feels like there's a lot in the going right in the Twin Cities with this team. Is this actually the team to beat in this division? No. They're not the team to beat. The Guardians are the team to beat, Chris, and you know that. You set me up to say that on this question. I know it. They're the defending champs. I think the White Sox and the Twins will tell you that, that the Guardians are the team to beat. Now, do I think they have what it takes to win the division? Of course I do. Uh, do they have to stay healthy? Yes. Has that started off well for them? No. Buxton, they're saying, are they going to be relegated to the DH position for the first month so they can load or manage his load, which is you know something that you like to do? Uh, and then we have Kirilov and Polanco. <laughs> that was a good one. Kirilov and Polanco are already going to start the year in the aisle. So the injury bug has already kind of bitten the twins. And I don't think that it's going to be that way all year long. And they do have pieces to kind of to, to fill that. Uh, the lineup's versatile. They have some pop. They have some balance. Uh, they can be a very good defensive team when they have the right pieces in there. Uh, as far as like the starting pitching, I still think they lack a true ace, which you can kind of say for some most teams. Uh, Joe Ryan can be that ace, but they have a very solid starting five, I think, in my opinion. The bullpen really can be good. absolutely lights out. So, like, I like all that about them. The pieces are there. The optimism is there. Carlos Correa coming back was obviously a jolt for them, and I think he's going to have a really good year. I want to see if it's if Buxton and Correa can play. Let's just say, I mean, Buxton, I don't want to put too big of a number on him because he hasn't done that in a long time. If they can both play 140 games, which is a kind of a big if in my mind, uh, I think they win the division. It, it hinges on those two being on the field. Has he ever played that many games? I don't th- He's only played over 100 in 2017, I believe. So that's a big if. But they're trying their best to manage the load, C. Rosie. This team's very talented, and they have a lot of versatile pieces. Like Nick Gordon's a guy, like they're going to have to find a way to get him in the lineup. And I think with Bucks being relegated to DH, he'll probably find some spots in center field. And then we'll see what they do with, you know, where Gallo plays and all that stuff. But um, they have a lot of pitching at the top uh, levels of their minor league. So like the depth is there. I like the team a lot. Got to stay healthy. How many? I'm going to ask you a question. How many okay. times do you think Byron Buxton has had more than 350 plate appearances in a season? I got to say once. Because the 2017. Last year twice, had, okay. Yeah, last year he had 382, and then 2017 okay. he had 511. We're That's gonna need it. like five. We're gonna need like five or 600 out of you this year, Byron. Let's go. I don't. I don't see that happening. I hope he does. I, I love watching him play, not against my team. He's really, really a good player. Um, so I really think this comes down to a couple of things. I think one under the radar signing that nobody has talked about is Christian Vasquez. Okay. I thought that was a great pickup for them. They were a mess last year behind the plate. It didn't feel really good. This guy is a really good game caller. Let's remember it was him, not Martin Maldonado, that was behind the dish the day that the Astros threw the no-hitter in the postseason. He's gotten clutch hits over the years, has been in a lot of big games. I think that is a huge, huge signing for them. I think he went three for 30 on his contract. You did. And I thought it was well-earned. The other thing I look at, 
is the two Lopez's. Pablo coming yeah. over, going to solidify their rotation big time. He is a he's a big time pitcher, no question. And then Jorge was a guy who got off to an amazing start last year in Baltimore. They traded him at his peak, and he was terrible in Minnesota. So I don't know which one he is. There's just not enough of a track record to say, oh, he's definitely going to bounce back because it just – we don't know. Last year, an ERA over four after the trade, 18 strikeouts, 14 walks. You cannot have that kind of ratio coming out of the bullpen. So I think there's a lot on him. You talk – they can blow cheese out of that pen between he and Duran, and there's no question. A lot of questions, though, whether or not he can do it now that the limelight's on him. I mean, look, you know I'm rooting for the Twins. A lot of things are going to have to go right for them, but you can say that pretty much about every single team, especially in this division. There's some teams that are outside of it that you're like, you know they're going to be there. I think this is kind of the three teams that we talked about, I think all have a legitimate shot at winning the Central. Uh, But each each team, health plays a factor. And with the Guardians, I think also, you know, they're very young, so that plays a factor. Can we make an agreement? Not... And not to say during these previews, well, if they stay healthy. I mean, it's some of it's true, though, for some of these teams. I don't think that's true for the Guardians. Like, there's been no track record of, of health there. But for the White Sox last year, it was horrible. For the Twins, like, their guy they have to keep on the field has only played over 100 games once. So, like, yeah, it's like, it means something. And there's a new training staff in Minnesota. Oh, well, for goodness sakes. Hey. <laughs> that's a big deal. Can help me with my stretching when I get up to the Twin Cities. Push, <laughs> yeah. one, two, three, relax. Push, one, two, relax. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, Miguel Cabrera is retiring after this season. Any other reason to tune into Tigers baseball on a regular basis? Uh, well, you know I love Miggy, so I want to give a shout-out to Miggy and, and what's going to be his swan song. I think he's the main reason you want to go to these games this go and watch this guy in the box one last time. Cause I think it is going to be special kind of sucks. We're doing the pitch clock in, in his final year. Cause I want to see him uh, kind of get those ovations. Hopefully the, do you think the umpires will understand that Chris? Oh yeah. No, no, they have to. Right. And, and the catcher will step out, like wave let's, the clock, whatever. Okay. Let's not be idiots here. Like, we've got to have a co- special Cabrera clock. I, I'm going to take the easy route out here and say like, there's a couple guys that you need to watch, uh, I think Spencer Torkelson is a guy you hope he has a bounce back here. He really struggled last year, but Riley green. I think if you just watch them play baseball on a regular basis, Riley green's a guy that just sticks out to you. Now he's had some struggles of his own. Um, Last year he hit the ball on the ground way too much, which a lot of guys kind of end up doing uh, and they have to figure out a way to not do it. So what are some ways he can not do it? You can try to hit the ball in the air. That doesn't always work for him. It's more about pitch selection and, and, and just, getting the ball in the zone more and swinging at the pitches in the zone more. If he does that, this guy can be really special. He can go get in the outfield. He has pop when he needs to have pop. He's like a true, uh, he's true five tool talent in there. So I think he's another reason to watch, watch him blossom into a, a star in the game. Cause I believe he can be. This was one of the most disappointing teams in all of baseball last year. They were a train wreck from the word go. The, excitable young pieces weren't even around to do much. And those guys you just talked about Torkelson barely had a 600 OPS. His, did you see what his war was? Negative 1.3. Yeah. How, shouldn't it just stop at zero? Can we just come up with that for all <laughs> no. the people that create war? Can we just stop it at zero? Cause it's just too cruel when you put a minus sign in front of somebody's war. I don't no, need, I don't like no, they, we no. need negatives. I like that. No, no way. You know what sort of uh, damage that can do on the psyche of a person? What was your war? I've lived year? it. Negative, negative one. You, you had a negative war one year? Probably, but listen, my war sometimes will fluctuate after I'm done playing. Like it's gone up, it's gone down. So like this is just part of the game, Zero. Wait a second. Your war has gone up and yes. down and you haven't played in four years? Yeah, because they, they, they're they always adjusting how they do the defensive metrics. So sometimes I'll bounce up and sometimes I'll bounce back down, dude. It's tough. That's not fair. You, We got to stop with that. Now you're fucking with people's emotions after they <laughs> retire. Whatever you retire with, if you start p- putting a new formula in, we cannot go back and recalibrate. That is a no-no. <laughs> I like it when it goes that up. Is a, 
still, that's not fair. I'm not a, not a fan of it. So yeah, Riley Green um, was good at spurts. You know, first of all, I don't know how he's only like 21 or 22. I look he's at him, 22 like, right now. Yeah, is that dude 30? He looks a lot older than okay. I expect. So yeah, that's the reason to watch those two. The big three that we were all expecting to see at the top of the rotation to kind of, you know, turn things around there. Comerica, only one guy's going to be pitching this year for the most part. It's Matt Manning. I don't know if Scooball makes it back toward the end of the year or not. I haven't seen how his progress is. And Casey Mize, we'll see in 2024, it sounds like. So all those guys that were big names and big prospects, Matt Manning, you're carrying the torch. That's about it. So the answer to the question is, there's not a lot of reason. That's mean. Not. But if I'm answering the question honestly. Yeah. Like, be, let, let's be honest here. The Tigers are playing. I mean, I don't know what they do. Playing the tour. Yeah. This is one of those, this is one of those things where like the window has kind of came and, and went a little bit. You mentioned the pitching didn't the, work out. They have some guys. I mean, it's either the windows came and went or it's just starting. I don't really know. I don't know if there is a window right now. No, I think that the problem is, is that the health of those pitchers is going to determine whether or not the, the window is open yet or not. Really? Yeah. You know, Scooball was good at times. He was he was really good. Casey Mize was all right. He didn't get any wow, certainly not with a number one overall pick. So they're ways away. There's certainly some individual players you'd like to go out there and see as far as competing in this division and competing for a playoff spot. And it's not going to happen this year. But they didn't finish last. That was reserved for the Kansas City Royals, who were really all about the development of Bobby Witt Jr. in year number two. Um, give me one other name that we should pay attention to. I'm going to go with a local guy. And you love Santa Clarita guys. I'm a Santa, Santa Clarita guy. Uh, Glass now is a Santa Clarita guy. I'm going to give you another one. Scott Barlow, who my brother worked with at Golden Valley High School, the reliever there. I think you got to watch him. Uh, he did an incredible job for the last two seasons. Last year, uh, 24 saves, a 2-1-8. Uh, Back-to-back seasons with a 188 ERA+. plus. He's a guy that a lot of people have talked about, like deadline, you're going to move this guy and get some prospects in return. I would say if you're a Royals fan, go out and watch him pitch. And if he does bring you back some prospects uh, this season, as you know, we're going through a little bit of transitional stage there in Kansas City, I think you'll be happy and you'll kind of wish him well and say thank you for your service, Scott, because he's been uh, he's turned into a, a very good reliever and someone that uh, has definitely helped them win ball games at times. So I'm going to apologize to you right now because when I wrote the question, I was I originally had in my head, give me the name of one other young guy. Oh, young guy. Well, he's 30. That's Scott. old now. Well, yeah, it is in baseball okay. parlance. It is, but that that's my boo boo. So you actually There's picked a, a good one. Yeah, there's some young guys there. I know who you're going to talk about. Because I thought you were going to talk about him. In fact, I texted him last night. I was like, well, I think Ploof is going to take you. So I need somebody else to talk about. Oh, no. And we're we're talking about Vinny Pasquantino, by the way. Sorry, Uh, Vinny. He gave me me MJ Melendez to talk about. I I was going to talk about him, but I, I switched to Barlow. Uh, but Melendez real quickly, I said, well, okay, well, what is his numbers weren't fantastic. He goes, he's a really good athlete. He's got sick oppo pop and his plate discipline is very good. And he goes, I think that's really going to help his average come up a little bit this year. But instead of giving it Melendez some love, I'll give it some to the past watch. Yes. You can go buy those at our John boy media. What is it? Shop.johnboymedia.com. Got it. Okay, good. You can go buy a t-shirt past watch. He's wearing it in our uh, upcoming episode. He only played half a season a year ago, but had like an 830 OPS. Uh, Great dude. He's going to be a regular, I think, on the Rose rotation. He's going to be dropping in a lot. So that's a good deal. You did say that. You uh, said that he's going to to get in there. Yeah. I think he's going to be a part of the rotation overall. I think so. We we talked a a little bit about it, and – God, yeah, we had a lot to cover in next week's episode. There's, it went all over the place. 
got to tell you, it was good. Who was Melendez playing for Puerto Rico in the WBC? He, I think that's where he was playing. I believe you're right. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, it looks like they have a bunch of guys to watch on that team. How about that? There's not a lot of uh, combo outfielders slash backup catchers in the league. Him and him and Dalton Varsho, studs. Right. That's Didn't tough to do that, man. Oh, and also IKF is add him to the list now. You can. Hey, we're back at it again with another division preview on Friday. We look very much forward to it. Don't forget to get your question of the weekend. That will be greatly appreciated, courtesy of Fubo TV. For our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan Rourke, and Trevor Plouffe, I am Chris Rose. We'll see you Friday on Baseball Today.